guys! Two over the top? <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey folks, Matt from Tavo here to talk about how to maximize your screen room while working on a budget. If you want to make the best of your screen room, this is the video for you. First thing I want to talk about is having a proper washout booth. Now, you can buy a nice pretty one that's going to last for a very long time. However, if you don't have anywhere from $500 to oftentimes $3,000, you can make one very affordably. Having a clean space to clean your screens, degrease your screens, and I recommend drying your screens will help make sure your screens are going to be perfect once they do go into the dark room and you coat them and are ready for printing. So this is our home-built washout booth. So like I said, you can spend some money and get some really fancy, nice looking ones, and they're worth it. They're going to last. If you move between shops over the years, it'll go with you. This one might not make the move. However, this is built for under $250 total. So this is pretty simple. We went ahead and used a base to a shower we got from Habitat for Humanities Restore. And then we got some plexiglass that we actually fog sprayed ourselves on the backside, mounted a light. We just framed this with two by fours and added this faux composite uh, uh, tiling. So it's actually just one big piece of composite wood. And we went ahead and caulked all the edges to make sure it's waterproof. So another thing I'd like to point out over here is we made sure to add a point to hold on to our pressure washer, keeps it from flopping around, as well as our hose. It's important to make sure you have a hose to do a proper flood rinse to help make sure you get all the chemicals off that screen. The last thing I want to point out is right here. This is not the prettiest thing, but very, very effective. So this is attached to our wet dry vac down here. All we did was take a PVC pipe, we capped it, took a vacuum tip, and connected the PVC pipe with some epoxy and made a slit right down there. We can vacuum off the water after we reclaim a screen. We can vacuum off the water, makes it dry much faster, keeps it from being a magnet for dust as well. After we develop a screen, we can also vacuum the water off of that, helping it dry faster to be print ready. Now next thing is when you get into your dark room, obviously you need to make sure you've got safe light. Now dark room is the term to make sure we don't have any UV light. It doesn't need to be dark. It's actually really important not to be dark. You don't want anybody actually falling over things or getting hurt. Make sure you've got proper safe light. The easy and cheap way to do this is to go to any store and buy a bug safe bulb. This is a bulb that bugs are not going to be attracted to, usually a yellow bulb. You can get them anywhere, even Walmart for usually four or five dollars. You can have multiple lamps or put them in your ceiling lights and they'll work just fine. You can also find gels or sheets that go over tube lights that'll help make sure it has an amber glow blocking all UV. Now, after that, it's really important to measure what the humidity is in the room you're working. So it's important to have a hygrometer. A hygrometer is going to tell you what the humidity level is in that room. Very important to notate that so you can keep track of if it's too high or too low to make sure your screens are staying in a stable environment. Now, ideally, the drier the better. However, if you are working with a direct -to screen there is going to be a spot you cannot go below. Try to make sure you're between 35 to 45 when it comes to your humidity level. If you're using film, the drier the better. You can get it down to 15, 20, no problem. Your screen's gonna dry very fast, very efficiently, and you're gonna make sure that you're not having any, any swelling issues of the emulsion swelling up because of the humidity. Next step is make sure you've got a nice dry box. Now, once again, there are very, very expensive units that'll do this, and they're great. They're absolutely worth the money if you can swing it. However, once again, if you're like us at Sound and Fury, we're kind of balling out of budget, right? So it's really important to figure out what they do and how to mimic those things. So you can easily make a wooden dry box and inside of there put a dehumidifier helping measure that you're staying at that 15 or 35% wherever you want to stay and a heater keeping it between 80 and 100 degrees. By having it into a box, you can close that box, keep air movement to a minimum, keep dust to a minimum and make sure you're controlling an actual area to control the humidity and the temperature to keep your screens in that climate. All right, so this is a very low budget safe uh, dry box. So all we do is frame this out with two by fours and we made sure to add just a, a very easy post usually used for a shower curtain and some thermal curtains. We actually added some Velcro to help keep them the sides. Inside here, it's nothing fancy. We used some basic drywall, drywalled it out. We made sure to add our hygrometer, which we talked about to measure the temperature and the humidity at all times. Then we have areas for two screen racks to go in and a shelf we built to store some screens. We have a very cheap heater, keeping this box usually between 80 and 100 degrees. And we have a dehumidifier that has a constant drain running down to a drain back over there. 
That way we can make sure it's always low humidity and we can come turn the heat around when we need to add the heat too. By having it in here, we can close these thermal curtains. It'll hold the climate and most importantly, it helps keep dust from the room from settling into the screens while they dry. Another important fact that people oftentimes overlook, it is not great on your body having to bend down to coat a screen. If you're coating your screen by putting it on the ground or even on a bucket and bending your back over and using one hand with a scoop coater, you're gonna be tying yourself out and you may even hurt your back. It's also not going to give you the cleanest screen. I recommend finding a way to mount that screen. There's DIY models or there's other things you can buy from your local supplier. We can bring that screen up to about waist height and have two hands on your scoop coater to allow for a nice clean coat. So make sure you're not bending over and doing the one arm one arm coat, it's just not the best method for you. People ask me how long should a screen take to dry? It's gonna depend on the variables and how much control you have. Here at our dry box we've made, we can just have a screen coated and ready to be exposed within about 15, 20 minutes. After it's developed, we can take the water off of the water vacuum and put it back in that box. Within five to 10 minutes, it's also ready to go. So again, you too can make a great dark room while working on limited resources. If you have some great ideas on how to make a better dark room, please leave it in the comments below. Make sure to give us a like and follow us for more videos like this.